welcome to the Excelling Church Georgia campus where your life gets better from here. I'm Pastor Jerrica and let's get ready to pray. Before I pray, make sure you like, share, and tag to your friends, your family, even your enemies, which we call frenemies. So go ahead and get ready to receive the word, to receive this prayer, to start your midweek. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for who you are and who you've been in our life, Father. We just want to bless you today. We thank you that our yes is greater than anything else. We want to thank you that our purpose and design purpose for you is greater than anything else, Father. We thank you that the warfares of our minds has ceased and desists now, Father God. We want to thank you that the warfare that the enemy has for us, Father God, can no longer touch us. It is dead and gone as he shall be in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that we come with power and authority in our tongues. I thank you that we have life and breath in our mouths, Father God. So we speak your name, Jesus, and we bless you on today, ready to receive what you have for us, Father. We thank you for the word that never fails us. We thank you that the promises have come to pass. We thank you that it is ours and ours only, Father. We thank you that we win because you win. We thank you, Father, that we are victorious in every step that we walk. So, Father, we bless you right now and always. You are mighty and mighty is your name. Glory to your name. Bring your glory here in this place, Father God. Bring it wherever they may be. Touch them from the left and the right, Father. We thank you that you are awesome. We thank you, God, that you touch the people. We thank you, Father, that we can touch the hem of your garment and we are made and set free. I thank you, Father, that I am whole. I thank you, Father, that I do not lack in anything. In the mighty name of Jesus, we go forth with your word and we say yes victoriously in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We are ready to receive your love. We thank you for the embrace. We thank you for the embrace in this place, Father. We place the city of Columbus at your throne. We place the city of Columbus at your throne, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call you Jesus here. We call you now. Float a mist up from above us, Father God. Have your cloud rain on us, Father, because you reign. We bless you today, dear God. I thank you that we have the words to speak. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and the comforter you left inside of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are ready to receive you always and forever, Father. We will not run or hide from you, Father, like Jonah. We thank you, Father, we have the spirit of David. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, Father. You are more than capable. You are more than worthy. You are more than able. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. Praise you in this atmosphere. We break down everything that holds us back, Father. We break down and we sever the spirit of anger. We break down and sever the spirit of repentance, of, of unknowing. We thank you, Father, that we get to call you and cast things out with the same tongue. We thank you, Father, that you are holy. Holy is your name. We thank you, Father, that you hear our prayers. We thank you, Father, that we are going to have a better week. We thank you, God, that you changed our mindset in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We are ready to expect greater things from you in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you and we worship you wherever we may be, Father. Holy, holy, holy. We just bless your name. We are ready to receive, Father. We need more of you. Empty us and pour you inside of us more and more. Glory is your name, dear God. We bless you. We bless bless you and we honor you in this moment Jesus we bless you and honor you in this moment we pray for you we pray for all things that you have set out for us in the mighty name of Jesus we love you Lord in Jesus name we praise and we thank you amen 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 Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And welcome to the Excelling Church Georgia campus, where your life gets better from here. I am one of your lead pastors, Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr. And you just heard your other lead pastor, my lovely wife, Pastor Jerrica Peacock, as we as she began to usher in the usher in the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And we welcome you all to another midweek. It's midweek, y'all. It's midweek. 
and we're so happy that you all are tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in, y'all. Do me a favor. Go ahead and like, tag, share this to your Facebook platform. Share this to your friends. Tag your friends in this, in this midweek because we are continuing on our series, which is the perspective and power of prayer, y'all. And you don't want to miss this thing, so get your notebooks. Get your laptops. If you don't already have them, get them out, okay? Get, get something to write with. Get some notepads. Get your Bibles, amen? And get into a spirit and an atmosphere of, of being able to soak in this knowledge so that way you're not distracted by things to your left or to your right because God got some amazing, transparent, and paramount things to teach, oh, amen? We're all going to sharpen each other tonight. And I've been, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm elated that I'm here. That my wife and I, we are here. We're back from New York. We had our poor conference in New York City under our lead pastor, our lead shepherd, apostle elect Jarrell K. Solomon. And we had an amazing time in God. And we are back. We are sitting so now, we are poured into, and now our cup runneth over. And we are ready to pour back into you all and pour into God's people. And so we're excited. Amen. We love y'all. We love y'all. So uh, before we go ahead and get started into it, for those of you who all want to sow to grow, you can sow to grow right now. Amen. We got two ways of sowing, y'all. You can actually, you can sow into our cash app, which is money sign, Excellent GA, or our Zelle account, which is the Excellent Church GA at gmail.com. You can sow at any time during this Bible study. You don't have to do it right now, but we just want to make sure we put it out there because I don't want to forget because I'm excited about what's about to happen tonight. Amen. 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 I love y'all. I want to give a shout out to a few people that are online. Let me see who's online. Who's online? Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Kiana Perkins. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. And my phone's slow. <laughs> huh? Oh, it's eight minutes. Wow. That's, that's a long delay. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. We are going to get started. Excuse our, I don't think it's a technical difficulty. It's just, it's just social media, it's just the internet. It wants to delay. Sometimes we got two minutes, five minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes. But regardless, the word is going to go forth. Amen? It's going to go forth. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and get started. I don't, I, do I have any announcements today? No announcements? Okay, well, we good, we good, we good. We good, we good, amen. So, without further ado, we're gonna jump right into it, y'all. We're gonna jump right into it, give y'all a little bit of nuggets, give nuggets, give you some food, something to soak on, something to chew on with this bread of life, amen. So that way you, you all are able to withstand the rest of the week because it's our midweek encounter. So we've been talking about the, pow the perspective and power of prayer the perspective and power of prayer. And we've actually been focused on James, James chapter five, verses 13 through 15. James chapter five, verses 13 through 15. And we, I was reading them in, I was reading it in the New Living Translation. And it reads, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Amen? So that if you got your Bibles, I hope you already turned with me. If not... You can follow with us, uh, James chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. I'll read, I read it in the New Living Translation. You can read in whatever translation that you have. That's fine. That's perfect. Um, so that's pretty much what we're going to be reading. That's the focal point, and that's been the focal point of our series this month. Amen? So just to go, a brief, go over briefly what we went over last Thursday, uh, I want to say we talked about the aim, James' aim at that point in time we, I asked what was his aim in that scripture. I asked, what do you think his focus was in that scripture? And this was assuming that you trusted God. And James' aim in that scripture was wherever you're at in your life, 
Whatever position you may be in your life, whether you may be up, whether you're down, whether you're like right in the middle, you're kind of coasting a little bit, is wherever you are with the Lord, pray more. Wherever you are within your life, in your position, in your situation, wherever you are in life right now, continue to pray more. But in order to pray more, you have to make sure that you have a relationship with God, right? You got to be with God. You got to have that relationship. But one of the things that we also talked about last week was the issue was this is assuming that you are trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. You trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. So when we talked about that, you know, the difference between Savior and Lord, we talked about Savior. If y'all remember this, uh, Savior is one who saves from any form of degree of evil, one who's causing to be delivered, right? That was, the, that was the meaning of Savior. And then we talked about Lord. Lord is a person having power and authority over others and a ruler by hereditary right or preeminence, preeminence to whom service and obedience are due. So we talked about Savior and we talked about Lord. And we, we also talked about James's aim in those, in those few scriptures that we read was to motivate us wherever we are in the Lord to pray more. And this was trusting that you have you that that God is your Lord and your Savior and so when we actually did we actually went into that we actually looked at there was an issue with Lord and Savior and I talked about it and I told y'all last week how God told me to tell the people that a lot of my people's prayers are not as powerful as they can be because their perspective of who I am to them is not in order some of them have allowed me to be their savior, but not their Lord. And so we actually kind of went do another scripture, which was Romans 10 and 9. And Romans 10 and 9 in a, in a New International Version says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not only is God saving you from the hands of the enemy and eternal damnation, but he is also taking rule in your everyday life everyday life and so that was where we kind of we kind of we, we were on our on a, I think we were, we were nearing to the end last week and we talked about that how it was that's a big not a challenge but that's kind of like where the rubber meets the road with a lot of us Christians is we allow God to be our savior but when it comes down to him being our Lord we don't give him our 100% we're not giving him that authority to direct us, regardless of whether we want to be directed or whether we need to be directed. We don't allow God to be our ruler. We don't allow him to make the decisions wholeheartedly of our lives. We don't wait for him to answer our prayers or answer our questions. And so when we dealt with that, I think the very last thing we talked about was how do you tap into this power? How do you tap into this power of, of, of prayer that we talk about so much. And we left off last, last Thursday night with saying, first you gotta realize that the power of prayer is not the result of the person praying. Rather, the power resides in God, which who we pray to. So what do you mean by that, Pastor Des? What I meant by that is the power of prayer is not in you. It's not in the person praying. It's not how the person prays. It's not the body language of that person when they pray. It's the God in them that, that has the power. It's the power that resides in God of the person that we're praying to that has that power. So we actually can go to another scripture. I don't know if we have it on the marquee, but I'm going to read it. Uh, it's 1 John 5. 1 John 5, chapter 14, and I mean, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Um, I'm going to read it right quick. And it says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. 
I'm going to read that one more time. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So remember, no matter whether it's the person praying, the passion behind the prayer, or the purpose of the prayer, God answers prayers that are in agreement with his will. Remember that. Remember that. It, it, it has nothing to do with the person praying. It has nothing to do with the passion behind the person praying. What it has a lot to do with is God answering the prayer that is in agreement with his will. So there's been a lot of times you may have prayed for some things and it may not have come to pass. Or, or you may have prayed for, for something to take place and it didn't take place the way you would desire of it to, to have taken place. It has to be in God's will. So a lot of us feel as though God's not answering our prayer because either he doesn't, I mean, a lot of us feel as though our prayer isn't powerful because God isn't answering it. And it's not that he's not answering it, it's just that it's not in his will. So you may be asking him to do something or you may be requesting of him to do something, but it's not in his will that it happens the way you want it to happen. And I think that's another challenging thing for us as men and women of God to kind of, uh, I wanted to say disseminate, but some of us to gather and understand is all of our prayers are not going to be answered the way we want it to be answered. All of our prayers are not going to, the, the, the outcome in which we request or the outcome in our prayers may not be the outcome in which we pray it to be. And we have to understand that even in that moment, we have to realize that God is still sovereign. God is still ruler. God is still going to be the one to, to solve and he, to answer or to be in control. And so as we move on, the answers, like I said, his answers are not always yes. But check this out. But they are always in our best interest. The answer may not always be yes, but it will always be in your best interest. And I know that's really hard to kind of swallow because we feel as though we know what's best for us. We feel as though we know that if I do this a certain way, this should happen to me this way. Or we know that there's times where we feel as though, you know, logical, when we think logically, if, I, if I'm doing this this way, it's just supposed to happen in this way. And God is not a God of logic. That's another thing we have to understand. God is beyond our train of thought. He's way beyond our human thinking. Our human thinking is thinking logically. God doesn't think that way. God doesn't move that way. And so we have to really just kind of rest in the fact that, okay, it may not have been my yes, but whatever the answer is going to be is in my best interest. And sometimes the answer is going to be no. Sometimes the answer is going to be no. Sometimes the answer is going to be wait. Sometimes he may not answer at all. And you're just going to have to wait on the answer. Okay? So, I think I talked about this last week, and I kind of gave, gave you a little bit of a, how can you say, a little sneak peek into, into, into tonight. But I have a question, and you don't have to answer it out loud, you know, uh, because I know also there's a delay on internet. But got a question. Do I have to sound like... Do you have to sound like me in order for your prayer to be powerful? Do you have to sound like someone that you saw on Facebook or saw on a, a live stream that was praying in order for your prayer to be powerful? You don't. Exactly. You don't. Your prayers are being answered. It's not based on the eloquence of our prayers either. It's not based on the eloquence of our prayers. Because a lot of people feel as though in order for me to pray, I got to sound like this. In order, for me, in order for my prayer to be powerful, I got to look like this. In order for my prayer to be heard, I have to be sounding and saying these specific things. And remember we talked about the perspective and power of prayer in the beginning. I kind of put out those questions about 
you know, when we came up in the church, we felt as though we had to be on our knees with our heads bowed, our eyes closed, and, you know, our hands up like this in order to pray. Like, we thought that had to be the position in order for God to hear our prayers, you know. That was something that we learned from others. That was something that we learned in regards to, you know, the culture at that point in time. But as I began to grow in my walk with God, I realized that, yeah, it's a time and place for that. Absolutely. I'm not saying you don't ever need to get on your knees because when you do, when you're physically bowing, when you're on your knees before God, that symbolizes not only humbleness, but it symbolizes who God is to you. But that doesn't mean that because you have to be kneeling down or you have to be kneeling down in order for your prayer to be heard. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be that way. Pastor Jericho, you had something? I did. I was going to say it's based off your relationship, not how you sound, but your relationship with God. How often do you speak to him? It's like if I go to a stranger and be like, hey, can you can you buy my groceries? They're going to look at me crazy. They're going to feel like, should I? Should I not? No, I'm not going to do that. But if I ask my mother, who I have a relationship with, hey, mommy, can you buy my groceries? She's more keen to doing it rather than a stranger because I have a relationship with her rather than the stranger. Mm, good. That's a good. That's a good analogy. That's really good. We don't have to use certain words. And then, remember, I talked about this also, is we don't have to use certain words or phrases to get God to answer our prayers either. But just like Pastor Jerrica said, there has to be a relationship. It boils down to what is your relationship with God? What is it? What does your relationship with God look like? What does it sound like? What is, how does it function? What do you do day to day in regards to your relationship with God? You know, in fact, it's funny that we talk about this is when we talk about prayer and we talk about the sounding of prayer and what it's supposed to look like or sound like what we think it is because Lots of ways we can be sitting there and we could be praying or you can think that you're, you or, I put it this way, how many of us have actually been in a church and just, just you don't have to answer out loud, but how many of us have actually been in a service or in a church where there's praying going on for hours, right? There's prayer going on for hours and there's prayer going on for a, a long dramatic, a long period of time, right? but you just don't feel nothing. There's prayer going on, but there, you don't feel a difference in your spirit. You don't feel a difference in the atmosphere. You just kind of feel the same way you felt when you walked in. You see what I'm saying? Or how many of us have been in environments where the prayer has, has taken place and, 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 the, and the Holy Ghost just falls down into the building and People are, you feel the difference. You feel a shift in the Holy Ghost. You feel a shift in your spirit. And notice that the long drawn out prayer that you didn't feel and notice the other prayer, if you kind of compare the two, I'm pretty sure it didn't take long for the actual prayer that was prayed that the Holy Spirit fell as opposed to the prayer that was prayed for hours and hours and you didn't feel nothing. Because in that instant, what ends up happening is a lot of us begin to, I would say, copy what we're hearing. And when you begin to copy what you're hearing, there's no, there's no power in that. Thank you, Pastor Jerick. Get you, if you're going to help me out in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the thing today, get your mic. Amen. But... We have to be very careful about understanding that my prayer life is going to be different than your prayer life. But the, but the, but the, main, the main comparison in the prayer life period is the fact that we're both, we're, we both got the same mentality in mind, which is advancing the kingdom of God and building a relationship with God. For example, when I talk about prayers, Jesus actually rebukes those who pray in, in repetition. He actually rebukes those who pray in repetition. For example, he says this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 through 8. And he says, when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, 
for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Now listen to that. Listen to that. The scripture says, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will, they think they will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. So, for example, I was at a ministry one night, and I think this is, I want to say this is probably right before uh, COVID hit hard. I was at a ministry, and we, had, we were having a night of prayer, right? And during this time of prayer, uh, if you felt the need to kind of come up to the mic, you would, tell the, you would tell the congregation what you would like to pray for, right? And then you begin praying, and the congregation would uh, join you in prayer, right? And so in the beginning, the, the, the prayer was good. People were coming up. They would were, they were ask for this topic. They will say, okay, I would like to pray for this topic, or I would like to pray on this topic, right? And then, he, and then what ended up happening was, let's just say, for example, Pastor Jericho could get up and say, well, I would like to pray for our kids in school, Right? Then everybody began praying, you know, we pray or whatnot, and then somebody else would get up and say, well, I would like to pray for um, my family and the kids in school. Then everybody would begin praying and praying for kids in school. Then for next thing you know, a third person would get up and say, I would like to pray for, I would like to pray for kids in school. Before you know it, people were praying for the same thing over and over and over again. And what ended up happening was at that moment, the leader of the, of the house, he actually got up and made, a, made a, an announcement, and he said, we have to be very careful because when we're in a setting like this and we are praying, we have to be very careful that we are not praying for the same things over and over and over and over again because what ends up happening is that's the enemy's way of coming in and actually creating dysfunction in prayer creating dysfunction in prayer the enemy knows how you pray the enemy knows how to pray the enemy knows the word so what will the enemy do in order to make a prayer not as powerful as it should be what would he do get you to a place to where you find yourself at a moment or in a position where you're praying over the same stuff over and over again. In an actual prayer, you're praying for the same stuff over and over again. How many of us have been in that position to where we were praying to God, but we find ourselves saying the same thing? We find ourselves, when we're praying, we're praying the same stuff. Or we're, we're saying the same phrases over and over and over again. It's almost to the point where we almost know we're going to say it before we say it. It's like we, we keep regurgitating the same phrases in our prayers and not saying that it's wrong. But what I'm saying is that's also the enemy's way of getting you detached from going deeper in your prayer life. That's the enemy's way of keeping you from going deeper into your your relationship with God to get to a place to where your prayers become deeper, your prayers become uh, more fluent, your prayers become more stronger. And Pastor Des, how, do you, how does a prayer become stronger? How does a prayer become deeper? You open up your word. You open up your word and you begin reading. You begin reading your Bible. You begin to, because the word is life. The word is bread. The word, it helps energize. So how will you be able to pray if you don't know what you're praying for, how to pray. The word actually gives you tools and keys in order to move forth in your prayer life. Pastor Jerrica? I would say for those of us, which I'm pretty sure all of us at one point will repeat the same prayer over and over, it's for two reasons. Not that we don't believe God would do it, but one of the reasons is it's like how we say, um, like it's a fill-in word. It's a fill-in prayer. 
to keep the, the prayer going. Not only that, but it's also um, sometimes we, we want to repeat it to make sure, you know, because it's on our mind. God, I really, 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 and it, you know, that same scenario that we want God to fix is running over and over in our mind. And so we want him to change it. We're really adamant about it. So those are the two reasons why I feel that it may seem dead or it may seem like it's not being heard or we don't feel like God is really listening. No, I think we're just one, very adamant about it, or two, it's like a fill on prayer because we know that prayer and we don't know how to keep going further. So sometimes we feel like we're, feel like we're smart when we say it because we know what we're saying and we know that makes sense. So yeah, that's my two piece. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where that falls in what we were talking about. You kept going. Hmm? You kept going. Why I oh, okay. I'm trying to film just, just trying to trying to cuz I know that somebody else is probably thinking the same thing and I want to make sure I get it clear. Let's see. How you Right. So for example, Okay, so for example, that night, right? Like I said, somebody got up and they and they said, you know, I would like to, I would like to pray for our, I would like to pray for our soldiers. Oh no, I would like to pray for um, uh, the, I would like to pray for the White House, right? Then somebody else would get up and say, well, I would like to pray for our, our governor. Or somebody else would get up and say, I would like to pray for our, our Senate. You know, I would like to pray for. So what happened, what ends up happening is everybody prayed for the same thing over and over again. But there's other targets that you could pray for. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying to, because I was going somewhere and you're going in a complete di different direction. No, 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 because that direction need to be talked about because there's maybe somebody that's, that's thinking in that, in that realm. And so what I'm saying is in regards to, in regards to this, that scripture that we're talking about in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. And when you pray, don't keep on babbling like pagans. Don't keep on babbling. So what that pretty much means is, one, know what you're going to pray for. You can also have targets on what you want to pray for. But don't get to a place to where you find yourself or you find yourself in a position where, how can I say it? Because now you got me, you got me stuck. Try not to get stuck. Mm. Prayer targets is important. It's one thing to pray in your mind because that can go on and on and on without missing a beat. But the moment you stand in front of somebody or the moment you actually speak your prayer out loud, that's when babbling occurs. If you don't have the relationship, if you don't have the words to say. Or if you're trying to sound bigger than what you are. Exactly. You don't have the relationship. You quote unquote saying that I don't know how to pray. No, anybody can pray. But at that moment, we seem like we're babbling because we don't feel like our prayers are as powerful as the next. So we take what we hear and we use it as our own and not our authentic self. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Man, you really stuck me just then. Keep going. Man, you stuck me just then. Um, 
let's move. Let's let's continue moving. I, we'll we'll get back to that. Um, let me see. We talked about how the enemy can easily distract you and get you off course, even while you're praying. There's a, there, those possibilities can always take place even in a prayer life, how the enemy can come on, can, can actually distract you in your prayer life. He can distract you while you're praying. And so what I always want to remind you all is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, uh, in, that last, in that last sentence it says, don't be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask. So before you even begin to pray to God, God already knows what you're going to ask him for. God already knows what you're going to request if there is a request in that prayer. You see what I'm saying? He already knows what you're going to say before you say it. So don't get to a place to where you have to, you feel as though you have to sound like something, be like something, or say the same thing over and over and over and over again in order to get God's attention. Because it doesn't, it, it doesn't always work that way. So as we continue moving forward, do we need to pray? Got another question. Do we need to pray with a group of people for our prayer to be powerful? Like, honestly, do you think, do we think we need to be in a group, a, 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 a group of people for our prayer to be powerful? Like, just think about it. Or have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought to yourself, well, man, I pray by myself, but the prayer is different when I'm in church praying. Or my feelings of prayer are different when I'm in church praying as opposed to when I'm at home praying. Has anybody ever thought about that? Any had, anybody had that in your, in your, like, ever thought about that in regards to your prayer life? You thought about that? Well, and, and there was sometimes where I thought about that the same way. I thought that there was... In my walk, I thought that when I prayed by myself at home or, you know, in my car, in the job or whatnot, I felt as though that um, it wasn't as powerful as if I was either at church or around other brothers and I was praying. But I want to I encourage you all tonight because in our text, it says the prayers of a righteous man, not group. In the scriptures, it says the prayers of a righteous man availeth much, not a righteous group of people. So the more, the more who pray, the more get blessed when God answers. So it's good to enlist as many people to pray as possible. That's good. But don't ever think that you need more people in order for your prayer to be answered. Don't think you need more people in order for your prayer to be powerful. Because it says in the Bible, the prayers of a righteous man avail up much. Not the prayers of a righteous man that's connected to a pastor. Not the prayer of a righteous man that's connected to a, a congregation. But it does say where two or more are gathered, God will be in the midst. So it's always good to be around those that are like-minded, righteous men and women of God, be, and praying because all you do is you, is you, you bounce off of each other's I would say righteousness and energy and and it, it feels better. You know what I'm saying? Or, but if it's just you and God, the prayer may be as powerful and effective as the whole group prays. So remember that. It can be just you and God. And your prayer can be as powerful as it was as it, when you was connected to the group. And also, it doesn't say that the righteous man has to agonize for it to be effective. What does that mean when I say agonize, overthink, worry? It doesn't mean that you have to be in a position to where you're overthinking what you're praying before you say it. And a lot of us, when we get to a point where we're praying, when an, an, another, another way of that babbling takes place is when we're overthinking what we're praying before we pray it. And... That's a way of the enemy distracting you when you pray because he knows that you're an overthinker. He knows that you don't know how to open your mouth and pray when it's time to pray. He knows that you are timid in, in praying to God openly. So what does he do? He uses your fears against you. But it says in the Bible that God has not given you the spirit of fear. But he uses that fear against you and then you find yourself babbling. You find yourself saying the same things over and over while you pray. 
because you're too busy overthinking what you're trying to say before you say it. But remember, the word says the father already knows what you're going to ask before you even open your mouth. So always keep, so I would say keep that in mind. Keep that, keep that close to your heart when it's time for you to pray to God. And know that God already knows what I'm about to say, so I'm going to be comfortable enough in, in opening in my mouth and praying to God because he already knows what I'm going to ask or what I'm going to say. So, remember we talked about, remember we, I, think, I think first week we talked about Elijah. His prayer was earnest and our soul should be earnest too. Remember we talked about how Elijah, he prayed that it didn't rain, and it didn't rain for, I believe it was 40 years. It didn't rain, all right? The difference between, we talked about the difference between, I want to say, did we talk about the differences between Elijah? Let me talk about Elijah right quick. So the days of Elijah, he marched in before the wicked, powerful King Ahab, and announced that it would only rain by his word, and his word came true. He was miraculously fed by ravens, during this drought though see the crazy thing about it is when it didn't rain he was fed by ravens he miraculously enabled the widow uh the widow of of uh the widow's flower to be replenished throughout the drought he raised her son from the dead let, 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 he called down fire from heaven to consume his water log sacrifice in front of the 400 prophets of Baal then ordered the execution of them all. Later, he called down fire to consume two groups of soldiers that sent to arrest him. And he parted the Jordan River and walked across it. And then he also, he was taken into heaven. It says, later, Elijah was taken into heaven without dying. Now, after we read, after I've just read off kind of bulleted comments about Elijah's life, right? After reading this, some of us will kind of say, wow, Elijah was kind of superhuman. He did all this stuff by praying to God, and God did all of this when he prayed, and God did this for him. So it was like he was, so it was, like he was somebody special, right? He was superhuman. But in fact, Elijah was just a man. Elijah was just like you and I. He was just an ordinary man. He had his ups. He had his downs. But through God, he was doing some extraordinary things through God. And remember, Elijah also believed that God was his Lord and his Savior. So that relationship that he had with God was already, was already embedded. It was already a deeper relationship. So we can have the same power that Elijah had. Better yet, you have the same power Elijah had. You just got to tap into that power. You got to tap into that power. How do you tap into that power? Because you, say this, you serve the same God that Elijah served. How do you tap into that power? First, you got to realize that the power of prayer does not result in the person that's praying. It don't, the power of the prayer doesn't result in you. The power of the prayer resides in God who you're praying to. You got to build that relationship with God. And it's more than just praying. It's more than just praying. It's reading of the word. It's actually building a relationship, right? And then, what else is going on? Um, and the crazy thing about it is, God can do some of the same stuff that he did for Elijah. So, remember we talked about in the beginning of this series, how I asked you all, What's the difference between Elijah and us? Like, what was really the difference between him and us? If we looked at everything Elijah did, we read up, read, read, read on when he walked this earth, the things that he did, what was really the difference between him and us? There was no difference. There was no difference. Elijah believed God. He saved. We're saved. Elijah has a relationship with God. We got a relationship with God. So what's the difference? The difference between us and him at this very moment is a lot of us hasn't, have not really tapped into the power that we believe prayer has. A lot of us haven't tapped into the relationship that we have with God. A lot of us 
have not surrendered God to be our Lord and our Savior. A lot of us are still dealing with that alone. We're still kind of, we, st we, we don't want God to rule over us wholeheartedly. We don't want God to rule, o o rule over us to the point where we don't make a move unless we hear from him. And some of us aren't even living in a position to where we feel as though our prayer should be powerful because we're not living the life as though we feel a, a, a powerful prayer should come from. What do you mean, Pastor Des? What I'm saying is you look at what you're dealing with day by day and you feel as though I'm not walking this straight and narrow path. I'm not, I'm not living to where I feel a man or woman of God should live when it comes down to the Bible, when it comes down to the rules, when it comes down to the commandments, when it comes down to having this relationship. So I'm automatically going to put into a position to where or, or talk myself down and say, you know what, my prayer ain't going to be that powerful anyway because I'm not living right. But what changes your power of prayer? What changes you not living right? What changes it? A choice. You got to choose to live right. You got to choose and tell yourself, you know what? I'm tired of living this way. I want to live for God. I'm tired of being in a position to where I feel as though my, my, either my prayers aren't being answered or there's not, or the, the power of my prayer isn't as strong as I would desire it to be. So God, what do I need to do at this very moment? And I honest, I'm pretty sure God is going to actually show you what you're doing, not, I wouldn't say doing wrong, but things you can change. Because the Holy Ghost will convict you and, and be able to tell you things in regards to how you can fix your life, how you can change certain things, not do certain things, start doing certain things. And before you know it, your prayer life will change. For example, we started praying with our, with our children years ago. Years ago. And one of the things that we, we were doing, my wife and I, what we do is every night before we go to bed, all of us pray. Every single one of us pray. Even the kids pray. And when we first started off, they were saying hardly anything. Hardly anything. I think, I think the only thing that they were saying that we understood at that very moment when we first started praying was the word amen. And that's how we knew they were done. Right? Now... They're praying. I mean, even DJ is praying. You may not understand what he's saying, but he's praying. And everybody knows when DJ is done because he's going to say amen. So everybody knows DJ. But see, the awesome thing about it is, and I've looked at my daughter Isabel, our oldest. She went from praying to what we would call babbling, right? saying the same thing over and over and over again, to now Isabel is praying for each and every person in her classroom. She literally calls off her classmates by name. And she says, and see, you want to teach, Pastor Jerrica? You want to teach? You want to teach? You want to teach? Man. And she literally says, thank you, God, for this name. Thank you, God, for this name. Thank you, God, for this name. Goes down the list. And I remember when Isabel was not able to pray that way. So how did Isabel get there? Prayer life. Prayer life. But I don't even want to say practice, Pastor Jerrica, because when we're practicing something, that means we're trying to get to a level to where we, 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 we know what we're doing. And when it comes down to prayer, prayer, your prayer life is always going to evolve. It's always going to change. It's never going to be the same. You're always going to go to deeper levels, higher heights, deeper depths in God when you're praying. But the difference is it's, it's, you see the change. You hear the change. You feel the change. And how does that happen? A consistent prayer life. You just don't pray on Sundays. You just don't pray when you need something. You pray because what we said in the beginning, it's a relationship with God. It's communication with your father. It's just like you walking around the house and your kid's not saying nothing to you. But your kid's only wanting to say something to you if they need something. It's just, it's just that type of relationship that you have with God. God wants to hear you. 
God wants to actually, he wants to embrace a conversation, a relationship with you. And we've gotten to the place where prayer is so, we, we put in so much of a religious tone on prayer to where people feel as though they, it, it's, it's, it's cliche to pray. Or it's cliche to pray a certain way. No, 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 no. You can pray to God the way you talk right now. And God is going to hear you. Because God senses the, gener the genuineness in your heart when you're praying. And that's what he attaches to. And if you are serious about wanting a deeper relationship with God and wanting to, to fix your prayer life and to change your prayer life, all it takes is for you to consistently pray. All it takes is for you to open your word and actually have, and spend time with God in reading your word. And then there are also other moments where we also are going to have training coming up this year when we deal with intercession. And they're going to be, they're going to be, you know, because we need to teach you all. We need to teach each other what prayer looks like. We need to teach each other to be comfortable in praying. Because I would hate for the day it comes down for you to pray is when you're in a position where you're in the hospital or you've been into an accident and that's when you begin to pray no I want to get you to a point where you're praying to God as much as you put clothes on in the daytime you're praying to God just as much as you need water to drink you're praying to God just as much as you need food to eat and I promise you your prayer life will become powerful. You will rely on the one that you're praying to as opposed to as opposed to what you sound like. And your prayer life will change. Amen. Amen. So we're done for the night as we close on our series. I remember we started in the beginning and I asked a question and I asked you rating your prayer life from one to ten. And I said one, I mean zero to ten, zero being you don't have a prayer life at all, and ten being you got, like you there with God in regards to your prayer life. And a lot of you remember, I hope a lot of you remember your numbers. And I wanted to ask the question today to see where our numbers stand. But I'm going to give you all till the end of this month. And I'm going to ask the question probably the last Sunday in this month and I'm going to ask you all where do you feel your prayer life is now on that scale has it risen has it has it dropped or has it kind of stayed in that same number and because my goal was that it changed at the end of this series is that your prayer life changed after you understood or got a grasp on prayer and we're just scratching the surface of prayer I'm just letting you know how powerful your prayer life could be now we got to get into a moment of teaching about prayer, period. But I'm just teaching you how powerful your prayer can be if you're serious about it. Amen? Speaking of prayer, let's close in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to come together to sharpen iron to be in your presence Lord we just want to thank you for waking us up this morning first of all we want to thank you for protecting us covering us undergirding us, guiding us, giving us wisdom beyond our wildest years and so Father we are asking for wisdom we are asking and, and calling for a deeper relationship in you Father, show us through your Holy Ghost where we're lacking. Show us through the Holy Ghost what we need to sustain. And show us through the Holy Ghost what we need to improve on. So that way we can see our prayer life become powerful, deeper. And more connected in you. And Father, I pray that the perspective of prayer has changed in your people tonight to what it should be looking like in regards to your relationship with them and father I also pray Lord God that you begin to show them how powerful their prayer life could be and God I ask that you just protect your people 
Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being there for us. And Father, I pray that you protect your people tonight as they leave this building tonight, but never ever from your presence. Bring them back at the appointed hour this Sunday as we meet up again and worship and praise and another awesome word from you. And Father, we thank you for those that are online tonight. Thank you for those that joined online. And Father, I pray that you meet the desires of their heart, even while they sit where they are right now. And we will give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. And Father, we pray a special prayer of continuous recovery and healing for Jeremy Batista and his family. Cover them now. Give them grace, favor, and provide like never before. And we will give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. It belongs to you and only you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And God's people say amen. Amen. Thank you again. This is the Excelling Church, Georgia campus. Where your life gets better from here. This is another midweek encounter. Thank you all for tuning in. Meet us here again for service y'all we are back in the building our doors are open this sunday at 4 p.m for our sunday service we can't wait to meet y'all we can't wait to see y'all we can't wait to worship with y'all amen i love y'all this is pastor des y'all have an amazing amazing night good night